Hi friends, I'm Jeffy G back with another video on Logic for iPad. One of the selling points is the round trip from your iPad to your Mac and from your Mac back to your iPad. Now that really depends on having a lot of the same things in both platforms, whether it's the way you use plugins and instruments, the source of your loops and samples, even the presets for some of the instruments have to be in sync between the two. Well, in this video, I do a few tests and let me show you what I found out. Well, for this first test, I'm starting with a pretty basic song. I purposely have stuck to instruments and sounds that are delivered in Logic Pro. I'm not using any third-party plugins or third-party uh, instruments. So at the top, you've got just basically retro synth with uh, some amp designer and ring shift modulation. On the second track, I've got drum kit designer, just using the drummer patterns. On the third one, I'm using studio strings and I played the MIDI. I'm using alchemy on the next track and I'm just using a, a delivered preset that hopefully also exists on the Mac side. I did add one loop, one audio loop, which you can, you can kind of hear here at the beginning. Just... And hopefully that loop also exists in the loop library with Logic Pro on a Mac. Okay, I'm gonna open an existing project, navigate over to the cloud. This is where my projects are stored on iCloud. Looks to be there. Let's just take a closer look. Yeah, we've got retro synth, just as you would expect. It's got several effects. Drum kit, designer, strings, with my MIDI, alchemy. This bass actually sounded a little bit different. Dark, heavy bass. Oh, it looks like that preset exists in both places. The single loop that I used is there. As long as we stick to Logic Instruments and content, moving everything from the iPad over to Logic Pro for Mac is pretty seamless. With the second round trip test, I went a little bit further. I do have those instruments that I mentioned before, still using Retro Synth. But I've added Drum Machine Designer in here. I've used a pattern region. Um, so if you click on Edit, you'd see I'm using a delivered pattern. I didn't create this pattern. I just um, loaded this from the browser. I went through a, a bunch of patterns until I found something that I thought was pretty good. And uh, we'll see whether this comes through to the Mac side intact. Sort of two elements to this. Uh, the first is the step sequencer pattern should be the same. The other one is the drum stack, which is made up of all of these uh, drum sounds, should be the same. If you were to look at it here, you'd, you'd expect all of these pads to exist on the Mac side. On, the, on this particular track, I'm using the Sample Alchemy, which is an instrument that does not exist on the Mac side. So I'll be interested to see what you get. And it's, uh, it's nothing fancy. I was just um, playing around with it. Uh, sound that goes along with uh, music and one other thing I did was I'm using an AU V3 instrument called Blias Monolit which I don't believe I have on the Mac side so that'll be interesting to see if it comes through as well and then there's one more funky thing that I did here was I played with the tempo map <laughs> be interesting to see if the markers that I've added to this and the tempo map 
show up on the Mac side. I just remember there was one other thing I did here is that on this strings track, I added in an effect, this dustbin plugin. So I have this as an AUV3 plugin. It's kind of a reverb sounding plugin. And I happen to own this both on my um, iPad and on my Mac. So I wondered if I pick a preset here as I have, I've picked this, I feel rubbish, rubbish. Transfer this over to the Mac. Will it pick up the preset and play that plugin? That'll be the test. Round trip two. The plugin named Blias Monolith isn't available on your system. Aha! Some additional content is needed for this project. You don't want to download it. I wish I knew what that content was, but yes. Now that's interesting that it wants to download additional content. So there must be something in there, a preset or something that's going out to the internet to get. And yet I thought I've loaded all of the content that was available for Logic Pro 10.0. 7.8. Aha, it's the sample alchemy, the sample that I used, electric pink pluck, distorted electric. That particular sample is not included in the uh, content of Logic Pro on the Mac. If I say no, this electric pluck isn't going to make any noise, I don't think. Uh, it's found something different. So there, there you go. That's kind of interesting. Electric Plink Pluck. This plugin provides playback compatibility with Logic Pro for iPad projects. You can load presets for this plugin, but parameter editing is only available when you use Logic Pro for iPad. So there you go. Sample Alchemy tool on the iPad tries to convert to Alchemy on Logic Pro, uh, but it doesn't really exist. You know, one option would be to convert it to audio before you make the transition. Okay, the tempo map did come over, which is good. You could hear the song slow down. Exclamation point, because I do not own Blias Monolith for Mac. The MIDI is there, but uh, there is no sound. I'd have to choose an alternative for that. And then on the strings, we had this plugin that I own both for iPad and for Mac, but no preset. Interesting. It should have picked up the preset, which was, I feel rubbish. That's a shame. So even if you own the same plugin on iPad and on Mac, the presets don't necessarily fire up automatically. Now, I don't know if that happens across the board or just on this plugin. I'm gonna try some additional plugins to see if this occurs again. Is the stack there? Yeah, the stack is there. Probably nothing wrong with it. So the markers and the tempo map come over, but uh, these other two features, the arrangement and this time signature changes, don't exist on Logic for iPad. So I imagine if you make time signature changes or use the arrangement feature on a Mac and then send it back to the iPad, it's gonna come over without those those two features enabled. For this next test, I decided to take a large project. I can't remember how many tracks this thing has, but it has a lot, I'd say 50 tracks or more. And it makes use of a combination of Logic Instruments, some of the best Logic Instruments, a lot of the plugins, but it also has plugins from third-party sources. Lead vocals here, I've got EQ, limiter, de -esser. Oh, it's got Nectar 3 in there, right? So Nectar 3 is from Isotope, and it's not gonna be available on the iPad. I can't see Isotope migrating that to the iPad anytime soon. Well, I feel 
So it has a big variety of sounds on it, and I wondered how is this going to migrate over to the iPad? A couple things that jumped out at me is I've got backing vocals that are being provided by M Voice. That's not going to be available on an iPad either. I'm, I'm using a particular voice, I can't remember which one, Kila from M Voice on there. I have a custom drum kit. It's Drum Machine Designer, a lot of parts to it. But it's a kit that I created with uh, samples from various sources. In order to transfer it over, I need to save it as a package. And just to make sure I wasn't um, missing anything, I'm going to save it into my temp directory as a package. And I'm going to click on this Include Apple Sound Library Content. And it's, it's going to be a pretty big file. It's about 3.1 gigabytes. And then from here, because of its size, I'm just going to share it over to my iPad using um, AirDrop. Well, here I am back in Logic for iPad, and I'm going to open up that large project, or what I've been calling test number three. And this is coming directly from my Mac. Well, the first thing you notice is it finds errors. So some of these things, like Ample Bass, are instruments, and, and Envoice One are instruments that exist on my Mac, that don't exist on my iPad. And then others are plugins, like it looks like um, Nectar 3, ROM, which is a reverb plugin from Native Instruments, that these things are gonna be missing. So these are gonna be the problem areas. And it looks like you can and uh, at least get a bit more description of how that may impact the project. So it's there and it seems to work, um, but I'm missing things. So let's say I take a look at the lead vocal, peek at the plugins. Of course, it's got some standard logic things like the channel EQ compressor turned off, but I guess without Nectar, I would turn that back on. Tur Ensemble. And you'll see where Nectar 3 was, there's just a plugin not available message. And I think that's what you're, you know, you would see on other tracks as well. So I used Envoice for a couple of backups, and you can see here it's going to say plug-in not detected. But for the most part, it is there, which is kind of cool. And if I expand, oh, all my um, markers are there. I don't need to see the tempo. Turn off the tempo map. You know, you would still see all the markers for all the so parts of the song, which is great. And this is like I said, this is a pretty complex project. Uh, one of the things that makes it complex is this Drum Machine Designer kit, which was a custom kit. With the options of saving this as a package with all of its content, it's brought all the samples forward in that kit, which is excellent. So, you know, when you listen to the drums, everything is there, even though all of the samples for these different tracks were custom. You know, virgins in Hollywood. I'm not unhappy with that. I don't know what happens to all those samples that came over with the drum kit. Are they now added into the sample library? I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to investigate that and see. In general, coming from a Mac to an iPad is going to depend on matching up plugins, samples, and presets. In the case of this particular song, it came over pretty clean. It's mostly audio tracks, as you could tell, and I could work with that. You're going to find a lot of interesting errors as you make this round trip and you get more experience. One of the ones I stumbled across was I was trying to bring a project from Logic Pro on my Mac to my iPad, but it starts before bar one beat one, which isn't allowed. So one more thing to add to your list. There's really two groups of users for Logic for iPad. There are folks focused on iOS music production they're gonna see Logic for iPad as maybe the leading DAW on that device. But for a lot of us who already use Logic on a Mac, it's 
partly adding to the capabilities of our music production workflow. It opens up the opportunity to develop ideas on the iPad, move it over to the Mac, use it in the studio, and finish up there. So some of what I've analyzed here is pretty important. If you found this video useful, click on the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. I promise you I'll be coming out with more videos that relate to the subjects you're interested in that help you make music. Thanks for watching.